Over the last month, the media has been full of a certain object that is in Turin in Italy, and it's called the Shroud of Turin. I think people have remember in the media, the Shroud of Turin has been all over the news. And uh, I just thought I'd tie in something with this with this object because I've also been blogging about the poem of the man God or the gospel as revealed to me by Maria Valtorta. And I just thought, uh, I think many Catholics have missed something here in all of this amazing news. And I just wanted to link you in with something. So just bear with me a second. I'm going to just show you something here. Over the last month, the Shroud of Turin has been in the news a lot. It's been across all of the media. You just have to type Shroud of Turin into the news. And it's in MSN, Al Jazeera, Fox News, Hindustan News, Newsweek, Independent Catholic World, Daily Express, New York Post, Metro, etc., etc., it has come up several times. New evidence of the Shroud of Turin suggests that it is authentic. And, it, oh, I mean, this is all over the million, media. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people have, have read it. One of the scientists that is part of this research, if you go to... Um, for example, the Al Jazeera page, and and you and you look up uh, who are the scientists, and the latest study is being conducted by an Italian scientist, Liberato De Caro, who began his research in 2019 and published his findings on the journal called Heritage in 2022. So this isn't new. This um, scientist published his findings. Uh, a few years ago, and they're now being made. They're not people are now picking up in them. They're now doing serious research. This same scientist, Liberato De Caro, the Italian National Research Council, he's got sixty-two papers on ResearchGate, and what it, I find fascinating is his research on the writings of Maria Valtorta, right? And this is where I'm kind of leading people today on the, the especially one of his papers that he, the hidden and coherent chronology of Jesus' life in the literary work of Maria Valtorta. Um, and I'm just going to bring you up this this study that that he published along with two other authors uh, back in 2021. During uh, he must have been researching this during COVID. Um, so it's amazing that this author, these these authors, these researchers that are all over the news at the moment because of their research in the Shroud of Turin, have also taken the time to go through what somebody have called the badly written uh, romance novel of of the life of Christ. You know, this is badly written. It's uh, it's um, you know a, ro a novel. It's totally made up. There's nothing of interesting there. You know, don't read it. Blah blah blah. And yes, there's an incredible amount of detail in the poem of the man God or the gospel as revealed to me as uh, the current title. The the t in those ten volumes, there's an incredible amount of detail. Uh, Maria Valtorta quotes dates, uh, I mean, uh, months, the, the months, the days, uh, lunar cycles, places, you know, an incredible amount of detail. And if what she is saying is true, if she is saying that this is a private revelation from our Lord Jesus Christ, this is inspired by the Holy Spirit. If what she is saying is true, then what she has written there can be verified. You know, you can take what you've written there and verify it. Now, they have done this long uh, study and I can post I post a link to it below so that you can you can read it for yourselves. I, I was going to read it out here, but it will take me a couple of hours. It is very, very detailed. But why I just draw your attention to something in here and it's fascinating, you know, the Star of Bethlehem. You know, the Magi, the three wise men that went and adored our Lord. Um, these scientists have really taken from Maria Valtorta's writings and put them in to suggest, well, what did they see? 
What did they see? Because we know from the ancient world that the stars were observed, that the the, the sun was observed, the stars were observed, um, people uh, observed the movements in the sky. You know, we only need to look, for example, at Newgrange here in Ireland, the that monument where once a year, in the shortest day of the year, the, the sun shines through the entrance passage. It was constructed based on on that event, that 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 uh, solar cycle, and in here they they talk about in incredible detail how uh, how the um, the magi, the three magi, arrived to Bethlehem, and the the various conjunctions and the possible meanings of these conjunctions based on Gematria. And what they have, what they are saying is, uh, as the Magi observed the cycles, as uh, observed the stars, what were they reading? They said, a good, a good and loving father, a God has come to be, who will come into the world on New Year's Eve at the mouth of the cave. His name is Messiah. To the light of Hanukkah, God shows him to be the redemption of the Messiah son of david i mean the the uh, it's 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 interesting it's fascinating the codified the coded passage that we find in the poem of the man god based on the data that maria voltorta has left there right uh days months uh, all of this data you can say oh, okay well we we can analyze that we can analyze that, and they were, and the Magi were bought, were were they 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 read in the, in in these signs a message, and they traveled, you know, to, uh, to uh, to Bethlehem, the house of bread. I just think now that all of this is in the media. Right, the Charlotte Trend, these researchers, and in, in every all of the Catholic media is picking up on these researchers now. They're really digging in. I think, guys, you have to read this paper. If you, if if, if people are reading the other paper on the Charlotte Trend, you need to read this paper on the the study of Maria Valtorta's works. I'm going to bring in my wide angle here because I want to hold up these works. This is the mammoth work that was first published called The Poem of the Man-God. And today the official title is The Gospel as Revealed to Me by Maria Valtorta. I have purchased it in Italian because I found the work compelling. And as I said in so many of my videos, it's not just a romanticised novel about the life of Christ. There is an incredible amount of detail in there. And that detail, our Lord wanted Maria to write about those details. It could have been just a novel about what Christ said. You know, it could have been, and Christ said, blah, 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 blah. And this day he said this, and this day he said that. But what Maria Valdorta is doing is also describing where he is, describing the date, describing the weather, describing what they ate, describing topography, describing the lakes, describing the mountains, describing what she is seeing, describing roads and intersections and uh, and places where our Lord wa walked, what she saw in a specific area. So when she's looking, she is she has a vision of, of a setting. She's describing what is she seeing, giving all of this data in this work. So that's what you have in this mammoth ta mammoth work called the the Gospel as Revealed to Me by Maria Valtorta. And now what you have is okay. This this work has been around for a while, and it's. It's been presented to Catholics and people have had their opinions and the church has had its opinion. And now scientists are stepping in and saying, OK, well, there's, a, there's data in here that we can mine. We, we live in the age of data, data analytics, data mine. We can take the data in her writings. Yeah, you know, we can look at what our Lord says our Blessed Mother, what she says and what Maria Valtorta's own writings are. And you can see the distinctions in in the writing. You know, it's a, 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 a different style and so forth. And 
I think that what these scientists are doing, and there's a, there's various studies from these scientists, the same scientists that studied the shroud of Turin, I think the science that these are scientists are, are giving us should be studied. Because so many people today don't believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. So many people in our own church do not believe in the existence of our Lord, in his miracles. We live in an age of rampant modernism. You know, and Christ came to give a very, def- very important message to us. He is the Redeemer. He came to give us a gospel. He asked us to change our lives. He asked his apostles to change our lives. You know, so, so many places in the poem of the man God, we see... Uh, a people stuck in their ways, you know, stuck in the way that they saw life and the way they interacted with life. You know, if they saw two children that were orphans and they were stealing, they would hunt them away. You know, those 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 kids, you know, they're, they're beggars, you know, what are they to us? And our Lord would come along and say, no, no. And he would challenge people challenge ideas challenge the way we see the, you know t- uh, transform you know in in the, in the law in the law the jewish law uh, adultery was a sin but looking at a woman wasn't and you have our lord coming around here okay well what happens in your heart you know you're committing adultery with somebody in your heart i mean a total new concepts okay and so in the poem of the man god we see this expanded out in the in the gospel as revealed to me we see the life of christ expanded out revealed to us in private revelation and in the catholic church private revelation is possible it is part of the of our faith as catholics to believe that private revelation is possible of course, when if it's possible, then you have to discern what is happening. You know, discern to see what's happening. Now, Maria Valtorta is dead, so she's not going to make one single penny from her writings. Okay? And her writings are out there on blogs, on websites, in, in multiple places for you to download and to read for free. I know some people have said, well, the books are pretty expensive. I bought the books because I'm absolutely convinced about this project and I uh, I bought them in Italian because I wanted to kind of balance. I have the English versions on, on, on my iPad and then I have the Italian versions, the printed version. So I wanted the latest uh, printed version. It's supposed to be published in seven volumes, but I suppose for efficiency, they, they, they published them, they divided them equally and published them in, in, in 10 volumes. But uh, there is a message that our Lord is giving to us in those writings. There's a message for our times. In a time with so much science, with so many experts, you know, that our Lord would come along in this century, in this time in the church, to draw us back to him. When so many priests are afraid to tell us what's a sin. So many bishops are afraid to stand up and tell us what is marriage? What is a sin? How are we supposed to live the Christian life? Oh, well, do you know what? Um, you know, if you, the truth is what you ever you want it to be. You know, who are we to be preaching a truth in the world? You know, your truth is as good as my truth. You know, <laughs> look around the church, you know, what has happened, what we've capitulated. As Our Lady of Akita said in, in, in 1973, the church would be full of those who accept compromise. Well, we've compromised to such an extent that the faith is absolutely decimated in Europe. In, in Rome, we have seen the return of paganism, right? The return of many people will remember back to 2019 to that event in the Vatican Gardens which has been spoken about and talked about for so many times Uh, but just a few weeks ago in Rome 2019 this is just before the pandemic when everything closed down they installed a statue of Moloch an actual physical statue of Moloch in the Colosseum in Rome because you know we have returned to paganism in Europe more people practice yoga than Catholicism. Uh, 
more people go to fortune tellers and seers and tarot cards and palm readers and all of this craziness than actually that go to the source of the truth, our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the midst of this confusion over the last, you know, 70 years, when thousands, tens of thousands of priests abandoned their vocation, where, you know, we've tossed out proper priestly formation in so many seminaries, uh, we have we don't understand the basics of 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 what Christ is trying to do in prayer, theosis, deification. In the midst of all this, do you not think, in the midst of this crisis, that our Lord would give a gift for the church and for the world to in where we would see His light shining, brighter than ever before in the work like Maria Valtorta. You know, as our Lord Jesus Christ said and at the end of the work, you can look it up, Google it. He gives the reasons why he gave us this work. Why did Christ give us this work? Because so many don't believe. They don't believe. He's an idea. For so many Catholics, Christ is, is an idea. He's not a person. He's not a reality. You know, they don't believe in his works. We have a priest in Ireland, Tony Flannery. He doesn't believe in baptism. He doesn't believe in original sin. He doesn't believe in the resurrection, as, as described. He doesn't believe in the, the basics. And he's not the only priest. So many do not believe. And so in an age when we do not have pastors to lead us, what happens in a church? What happens in the church? We do not have pastors that will preach passionately about their encounter with Christ. Do you think the apostles were just laying, well, do you know what? Uh, when I walk with Christ, and do you know, I remember, the, the, yeah, and sure, uh, I was a great old time, and uh, I, uh, that, that resurrection thing, sure, yeah, yeah uh, it was interesting, yeah, yeah. I denied him, and, and sure, look, uh, but then the Holy Spirit came along, and then sure, we just toddled along, and we went out and prayed. They didn't live like that. They lived with conviction. That's how they, they lived, spoke with conviction. They saw. They believed. They were transformed. They were missionaries. They went out. We do not believe in the church today. The gospel has grown stale. It has grown old. It has. It's not the truth anymore. It's one of truths. It's one of you like the gospel. That's okay. You like the Quran. It's equally good. It's equally good. My my blessing is for everybody. It's like if you want to believe in in that guy that came along six hundred years after Christ preaching a, a different gospel, and you know, you, and you want to give in to your carnal desires and have a few wives. I like it's all good. It's all good. Your religion, Hindu religion, and this religion. You know, Europe has been invaded by the New Age. <laughs> It has been invaded by the New Age. New Age principles, New Age... Uh, free, Freemasonry is underpinning it all, obviously. Fratelli tutti. Fratelli tutti. Tutti tutti fratelli. We'll all be brothers. You know, do we forget what Christ came to give us? And that's why I'm encouraging people to read Maria Valtorta's works. Read it. Read it. Read it. Read it as a scientist. If you if you're a scientist that does not believe in the in the message of the gospel, read Maria Valtorta's works. Read the science behind it. Read it with that eye. Uh, and I think it's no coincidence that these scientists that are all over the media now, millions and millions of people reading about their research are the same scientists that are telling us, look at Maria Valtorta, look at what she has written there. It is divinely inspired by our Lord for these times to wake up the church. <laughs> because so many do not believe. He says it there. Our Lord says it in, in the poem of the man God. And look around us. The new sacrament of Europe is abortion. You know, people think, oh, Robert, you're so fanatic about this and such. More Catholics, more people in, in France have an abortion than, have, than will have their child baptised. To give an idea. 
and they enshrined it in their constitutions. The same in the UK. It's the truth. You know, it's the new demonic sacrament. That's why Moloch was installed in, in the Colosseum in Rome. We would rather... Do you, do, do you understand? And do you think that heaven is sitting back quiet as we destroy ourselves? You know, we spend so much time focused on climate change. We would not have a so-called climate crisis if we had Christ. And trying to sell a climate solution without Christ will never work. It will never work. No one would believe you. You know what? Like the world would more look at Greta Thunberg than, than Pope Francis when it comes to climate. Christ left the church to preach a message. And Christ was poor. He walked on foot. He didn't use public transport. He didn't use all of the... Do you know, he, he rode a donkey. You know, sell Christ. Sell Christ to us. Give us Christ. Once people know Christ, they won't be transformed. They won't be transformed by consumerism. They'll be transformed by him. You know... If, if, do you, do, do, does the church not see this? But no, you know, it's trying to, I you know, sell us injections. This is what the last four years, the, the Pope has been trying to sell us novel medical injections and trying to sell us climate change and signing this and we can all be friends and talk to each other in tunnels and stuff like this. I don't know. Give us Christ. What did Christ leave us? What did he leave us? And this is why the church needs to take seriously and read the writings of Maria Voltorta. What would what is Christ saying to the church in those writings? How he lived? And what was his message? How we're supposed to act? And to treat each other? You know, Christ would not have sit sit back and say, oh, abortion's fine, it's dem democratic. And look, if you want to sleep around and marry whoever you are, but that's fine, that's your decision. Sure, look, uh, you know. Or would he have preached? How would he have preached? You know, how would he have taught? You know, is it, did, he, did he come to, to, to preach a message of universal salvation? He doesn't seem to. You know, he spoke about realities of, of it, we can be eternally lost based on how we react. You know, we, if, we, if we go against the laws of God, we destroy ourselves. It's like going against the laws of nature. You know, you can drink so much alcohol and sooner or later your liver is going to give out. You know, God didn't send that chastisement. We chose it. That's the natural consequence of going against what naturally our liver has been created for. It's the same with the laws, the laws that, that, that God has left us in this world. But anyway, I go on to, I'm very passionate about this because when I see all of the studies coming out now on the Shroud and on Maria Valtorta, I don't think people are aware of this. And this is truly amazing. And so I, I, I encourage people to read the research by those, those, those professors and read the poem of the man God or the, the title today is The Gospel as Revealed to Me by Maria Valtorta in the 10 volumes. Read that work. Read it. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.